Hello and welcome to our very first Maya project, building our oil drum using basic Maya 3D modeling techniques. By the end of it, we'll have something that we can take into Unity and then we can use as a fully usable 3D object. So let's dive straight in. First go to File in the top left and drop that down and go to Project Window and open that up. In this window, we basically set up our entire project uh, where we're going to save all our different files and images and any textures that are associated with this project. In the current project, we just click New and then we name our project. This will give an overall name for the project, so we'll just give, call it Barrel. Underneath there is our location and this is where we're telling Maya to set up our project on our hard drive. Uh, so we know that all our saves are going to go to this one destination. Now I'm just setting up a folder on my hard drive, calling it Barrel, and then clicking Select. This means that my project is now set up on my hard drive, and I just click Accept. The next step is just for safety, we want to go back to File, and then go down to Set Project. Click that, and then find the folder we've just made, just highlight it, and then click Set. We are now just double checking with Maya that we are definitely saving in that folder. This is just a precaution, uh, so we definitely know that everything's been saved in the right destination. We will actually make a new project for every one of these assets we're going to make during these small tutorials, just so we can keep going over the same process and then we can learn and it becomes second nature to always make a project at the beginning of a project so that all our saves are going to be in a nice safe place. So first things first, you want to click on the cylinder tool in the top polygon shelf, double click that and this will bring up this menu and here is your basic, your divisions of your cylinder. So then with that selected, you close that and then shift drag in the middle of the grid and this will create your cylinder. Here we have the channel box for the object we've got selected, in this case our cylinder. This just gives all the scale, translate and rotate data for our, our chosen objects. So what we want to do first is just change the translate X and translate Z coordinates to zero so that's in the center of the world. Uh, don't need to worry about why because we're going to adjust the height of this object ourselves. At this stage we want to uh, hold down our right mouse button, this will bring up our context menu and this menu contains edge, object mode, face and vertex and these are all the different ways we can actually select our object or select the different sections of our object. So holding down the right mouse button just select vertex. Your object should now look like this. So dragging a marquee tool over the very top section of the model. Press W on the keyboard, this will bring up your translate tool. Now this translate tool is uh, basically how we control in what axis uh, our object or our specific uh, component we have selected, where that moves. Uh, you'll notice each one of these little arrows is uh, colored a different color and all we have to realize is the red arrow is the X axis and that axis dictates if we were looking at it straight on if the uh, object was to move left or right. The green arrow dictates the Y axis and that basically dictates if the object moves up or down and the blue arrow is uh, the Z axis and that is an axis that, it, that goes forward and back. Uh, so those are very key, um, key rules to learn when you're learning 3D modeling is just these different colored axis just to help and what axis does what. So now that we are uh, familiar with what these axes do with the top section of your cylinder selected make sure all the little orange uh, these purple points are yellow what we want to do is drag the Y axis the green arrow up and what we're doing here is we're basically eyeballing in how tall we think a uh, oil drum would be in real life. 
Now, with our cylinder at the right height, what we want to do is hold the right button again to bring up the menu and select face. Now what we want to do here is select all the faces, all these little triangles that are on the very top of the cylinder. We're going to get rid of those, um, so just remember when you're selecting them to do more than one selection, just click and then hold shift and then click on the uh, other faces you want to delete and make your way around until they are all selected and then hit delete. When we have those faces deleted, um, we just want to go back into the context menu and select edge. Double click on the very top of the cylinder, you, then you should select all the edges around that one edge loop. Our next step is to extrude these faces we have selected inwards to create the top lip of the barrel, which we're then going to pull down and create the interior of the barrel. So the first thing we do is go up to the extrude tool, which is just in the polygon shelf above. Now what happens next is uh, this little tool comes up. We're not going to use this just yet. Uh, what I want you to do is just press R and this will bring up your scale tool. And what we're going to do is going to grab the center of the scale tool and just scale it in just a tiny bit. And then click extrude once again. And then we're going to press W for our old translate tool. And then we're going to drag that down in the Y axis. Now. At this point, we probably won't be able to see inside the barrel, so just click the X-ray tool and then we'll be able to have a ghosted version of the geometry, which we can then see uh, our edge loop, so we can bring it down to about as low as we think a oil drum would go. The next step is to extrude the bottom of the interior of the barrel, so re-extrude, go back to your scale tool and just drag in centre. Um, you might need to get a little bit closer to this, so press F. This is your frame tool, and this basically puts into frame whatever you've got selected. Now with these edges still selected, what we're going to do is we're going to scale it in once again, and then we're going to go to the context menu, again, hold and right click, and then select vertex, and then drag a marquee box over these, and then scale in again until they're all together, and then click the merge tool and then all the vertex because they're so close together they will all merge together and create one solid base so now the bottom of our oil drum has now been made so going back to object mode by holding right click and selecting object we can now see that our barrel is in a pretty good state uh, it's already got a barrel like form you can already see that it's uh, got a lot of visual information so the next step now is to start adding the minor detail. Uh, these are the little indentations on the side and the lips at the bottom and the top of the barrel. So the next step is to go to Mesh Tool. This menu basically has a lot of uh, tools we can use to uh, develop our models a bit more. But what we want to use is the Insert Edge Loop Tool and we want to go to the little uh, selection box which is a little grey box on the side of it for our options. The box which appears on the left contains all the different functions for this tool but what we want to have selected is the multiple edge loop tool and we want to change the number of edge loops to four. What we're going to be doing now is actually laying in the initial uh, edge loops to uh, dictate where our ridges of the center of the barrel are going so if you always want to click on the exterior of the barrel and then the interior of the barrel we will create four on the exterior and four on the interior our next step is we want to select the top two interior and exterior edge flows so by pressing w to bring up our translate tool and then holding shift and double clicking the top two exterior edge flows and the top two interior edge flows we can then go and press R to get our scale tool and then we want to scale them down in Y so the green axis just so they would be the width of the top of the bottom of the indentation and then we want to do the exact same thing to the bottom two exterior and the bottom two interior edge flows and then we can eyeball in roughly the same size Next we're going to be adding another set of uh, edge loops, so go back to your mesh tool and then go back to insert edge loop, but this time we're going to change the number of edge loops to 1. 
and then we're going to click at the top and the bottom and then we're going to move each one of these edge flows down in Y so W and then translating the green axis just so they're about the width of the top and the bottom lips that you'll see on an oil drum and then we're going to do the exact same thing in the interior of the barrel so we get an interior lip this time though uh, we're going to snap the interior edge flow uh, edge loop to the same position as the exterior edge loop of the top of the barrel now we do this by holding V and that should bring up our snap to vertex tool and you'll notice that the center of the uh, pivot in the uh, our little manipulator turns to a circle and you'll also notice that the magnet at the very top has turned uh, has been highlighted and that just basically shows that we've now got that tool selected now what this tool does it basically looks for the closest vertex to the pivot so if we just grab the y-axis and move up you'll see that it snaps to the same position as the external edge loop because it's the closest vertex that uh, the edge loop can find and that's a good way of for us to get um, good edge flows when we want to get stuff nice and equal now the next step is to make the uh, rim of the barrel at the very top and at the very bottom so what we want to do is go to our context menu by holding right mouse button and then go to face and then if we just click on one of the um, very top edge loop faces and then holding shift click on the one next to it double click on the note on the one next to it you will auto complete the entire ring and if we do that again for the bottom we now have both of these edge flows selected our next step is to go up to the extrude tool click that and then press R to bring up our scale tool now what we're going to do next is we're going to use a function that Maya has which is a very useful tool when we want to do multiple extrusions like this we want to hold the control key and then we want to drag on our Y axis. Now what we're doing is we're basically telling Maya to ignore the Y axis. And we can use this in multiple tools but for now just click the Y axis, hold control and then drag and you'll see that the faces extrude on the Y and the X, on the, sorry, on the Z and the X but they are not influenced by the Y axis which means they're not going up or down now the next thing we're going to do is do the exact same thing but we're going to extrude the interior of the top rim again holding control and dragging on the Y axis to ignore the Y and then using the face tool we want to go around and select the very top edge flow at the top of the barrel and then just move that up in Y just a little bit our next step is to uh, go to context menu and select edge and then select the bottom of the rims of the interior and the exterior and then move them up a little bit in Y just to soften the uh, angular transition between the horizontal and the vertical and then we want to go down and do that for the bottom and this just gives a much more realistic real world uh, molded metal feel and at this stage our bar is looking pretty good only one or two more steps until we're finished and then we can take it into unity what we want to do now is go back up to mesh tool and then reselect insert edge loop and then we want to just keep it at number one and then in the middle of these edge loops we made just add one division And again doing a shift and double click we can do multiple selections of edge loops select the exterior and the interior go to scale by pressing R and then again holding control scale up in Y and just move it out just a little bit so we get a small indentation around the ridge As you can see there the actual form of our barrel is now fully there the next step would just be to um, visually make the barrel look a bit better.
So now with the barrel selected, uh, we want to go up to normals in the very top menu. And then we want to go down to soften edge. Basically what we're doing here is all these hard edges that uh, might have appeared during our modeling. We're going to get rid of all that and everything will, very look, will look very soft and uh, will be no definition. So as you can see there, there's no real definition to the barrel. What we want to do now is uh, go back to edge select mode and then select the two exterior rims and the two interior rims in the center. Go up to normals and then click harden edge. Now what we're doing here is we're giving the impression of a hard edge and this just gives the barrel a little bit more definition and we just want to go through and find all the places where we'd want to define an edge. Go through holding shift and selecting the edge, going up to normals again and then hardening those edges and as you'll see the whole barrel just becomes a little bit more realistic and a little bit more believable as an asset and at this stage this is then uh, good to save so we'll go to file uh, save as and this will take us to our project folder where we can now save our barrel and then this is now ready to take into unity